The first panel starts with three speakers. Dr. Jagdish Krishnaswamy, a senior fellow at the Sudhi Sehgal Center for Biodiversity, Viju B, who is also the chair for the panel, and an acclaimed environment journalist and author of the book Flood and Fury, and Suprabha Seshan from the Gurukula Botanical Sanctuary in Wayanad. Viju B opens the panel discussion by going into the root of the word Kaveri. Kaveri came from, uh, perhaps came from the word Kawaiter. Kawai, which means, uh, uh, which, uh, Kawai, which means, uh, the, it's about branches. I mean, so, so what happens when this, all these branches are getting mutilated? All these branches, for example, in Kaveri, we have 15 tributaries uh, originating from Kapta. The conversation starts by Suprabha Sishan talking about understanding the needs of the local being the only possibility of reviving Kaveri or any water body for that matter. She believes We have been witnessing how by removing toxic effects, removing fly tipping, removing plastic, removing um, um, dynamiting, preventing blocking, all these things that are detrimental to the river, we have witnessed the surge of fish in this little stream. And I am part of a group that looks after 16 kilometers, such a tiny, tiny little stretch of street compared to the 800 kilometers that we are concerned with today. But if a small group of people could do this on 16 kilometers, surely the next village down, surely the next township down can bring together people who have all these different talents and capacities and wisdoms and which are very special and local to a place. And this point has now come out several times today that we need to understand things that are local. Her solution to Kaveri is simple. Anything that smacks of a large-scale solution fills her with suspicion because it denies the river the diversity that is natural to it. Vijubi then takes on to the conversation and goes on discussing about the Western Ghats, a topic on which he has significant experience. Upon which, Mr. Jagdish adds, It's very challenging. We already have, uh, if you look at the Western Ghats, compared to many other parts uh, of the country in terms of uh, conservation reserves and national parks, sanctuaries and so on. Uh, our record, at least since the early 90s, uh, when the deforestation trends sort of plateaued out and then we of course had issues like uh, plantations of, of, of exotic species in, in some areas and so on. But otherwise, compared to many other parts of the country, actually we actually have a fairly uh, good record in terms of conservation of the challenges remain. The discussion moves back to Sishan, who impactfully says, and I quote, climate change is relatively a mystery to those sitting in a room, unquote. For her, the most natural solution to restoring a place is to give more agency to natives and locals. So the problem, as Minisha said, the roots of the problem is fundamentally this extractive culture and this way of being which is industrial civilization, piping in the bodies of the natural world to feed us and to entertain us and to support us and we do not return something back to it. That is beneath and below the fires and the, and the, the increase in carbon and so on. But being working in, with plants on such a uh, daily basis for so long, how do we know how trees will respond to carbon emissions increasing? How do we know what's going to happen to increase sugar in the atmosphere? We're talking about sugar and its effect on uh, human health, but what does increased carbon in the atmosphere actually do to the bodies of plants and trees that require and live off of that? Um, so this is not a problem to be solved just like that. This is Fundamentally, again, going back to the thing that unless this extractive culture, unless, you know, little children are saying it now, unless emissions uh, are cut by not just a few percent, but by a massive percent, the trees, 
how much more can they absorb? How much more work can they do? How much more can the rivers and the oceans do when you've got acidification and calcification going on? Sishan drives home the point about the rights of natives by adding This one solution fits all things culture has to end. And that is the only way that we can meet the excesses of climate change by becoming resilient ourselves. Not just the Kaveri. How many of us are going to become resilient ourselves with the water bodies beneath us, flowing through us? When can urban culture wake up to the fact that it has to grow its own food and not rely on the backs of the farmers that it has predated upon for, you know, hundreds of years? So Krishna Swami drives the conversation forward, moving on to the topic of Sadhguru and the politics of the oversimplification of the Kaling Kaveri movement. They had certain uh, limitations in terms of they didn't want to challenge the political economy of dams and river linking and all in a very big way and get into that sort of territory. And they wanted uh, to come up with something that would be simple uh, because they felt that you're going to have to start with something very simple because that's how people get right here on a simple idea and all. But we know that reviving a river um, from headwaters to the Delta is not a simple thing, it's very complex and the Kaveri is a very complex uh, system uh, in terms politically, economically, ecologically and of course with climate change adding to that. As the discussion comes to a conclusion, all three speakers are in agreement of the fact that for revitalization of Kaveri, the rights of tribals, locals, indigenous people need to be respected and their practices need to not only be preserved but be encouraged.